Well, hello, friends. Welcome one and welcome all. I can't offer much in this outdoor hall, but sit here and rest. You must be weary, and I'll share with you Tales of Tyria. <laughs> This week on Tales of Tyria, we've got a huge amount of news from the recent press beta, a whole big discussion on microtransactions and the Guild Wars 2 economy. Stay tuned, it's coming right up. Yes, welcome one, welcome all, welcome to another exciting episode of Tales of Tyria, right here on the Sound Strategy Network. You can find us at talesoftyria.com. I am Bridger. Welcome to the show, ladies and gentlemen. It is good to be here again, number 24 it is, and I am glad you got a hold of the program, however you may have found it. Tell a friend or two, won't you? First things first, want to quickly send a thank you to Vakalv and Laura for donating to the show this week. If you feel like donating, there's a button on the right side of the website. Feel free, but do not feel obligated. Also, wanted to let you guys know that if you wanted to help out the show, leave us a review on iTunes, and uh, that'll definitely help us. Uh, but do it honestly. Don't just give us five stars because I tell you to. If you think there's something that could be done about the show, tell them it's four stars. They lose a star for having a bird, and I hate birds. Whatever you want to do. All right. Also, follow us on Twitter. And a very awesome new thing, even though... Unfortunately, Tales of Tyria was not in the beta this week. I did spend all weekend uh, working on a video called How to Guild Wars 2, The Economy. And there's a link to that in the show notes. So I uh, just wanted to let you guys know to check that out. Let me introduce everybody else on the show here. As I said, I am Bridger. And joining me this week, we have a lovely group of hosts and co-hosts alike. Unfortunately, Freelancer and Kai can't make it this week. But filling in, we have three people filling in those two slots because apparently... I don't know how to... There's no joke there. Malkior, welcome, sir. Hello, hello. You're a bit pixelated. Have you been losing weight or something? I mean, I don't understand. There's, too, there's not enough pixels to go around. <laughs> <laughs> I upgraded the computer and the internet said no. Apparently so. All right, also joining us is Mr. Jay Vega. Welcome, sir. In crystal clear quality, I should say. Good evening. My internet's awesome, I guess. There you go. <laughs> also joining us for the first time, popping his Tales of Tyria cherry, as it were, Oku Raku. Welcome, sir. And now I can't hear him. That's amazing. Oh. <laughs> he was having some trouble Ready? earlier getting Hello. the... Oh, oh, there we go. I think I hear you now. Sorry about that. Yeah, thanks for having me. Uh, I see my quality, so my strategy is basically to stand completely still. And eventually my picture will be clear. <laughs> I think Still's that might work for you. Also joining us, we have uh, returning, also from Team Legacy, Mr. Great. Actually, everybody, this is the Team Legacy show here. Because now that I think about it, the only one not in Team Legacy is Kai. Um oh. All team legacy members to the, to the Tales of Terry podcast. And welcome, great. I'm show. sorry, I didn't even give you a chance oh, to say hello. Hello, I'm here. <laughs> <laughs> this is also the episode where we can't ever see anyone's eyes because they're all flashing back at us with the robotic sounds and lights. Anyway, <laughs> as I said, we did make a, a great new video, Guild, How to Guild Wars 2, The Economy. Uh, there are a lot of different things that I packed into there, but the main important thing that you guys are going to probably want to check out is this particular image. Uh, that I put together, and this here is basically an explanation of all of the different currencies within Guild Wars 2, and inside the video, it's about 10, 12 minutes long, I believe, and I go through all of these different currencies, how they work, and also how the auction house works, well, not auction house, it's a trading post, actually. Um, I talk about all of these different things, how they work, what the currencies are, so uh, there's a link to this uh, image in the show notes as well, if you want to check that out, and uh, we talk about more about this later on. Uh, for now, I gotta stop saying the word uh, and that would be my, my goal for today, actually. Let's jump into some of the news. Now, this is very interesting. There was some discussion and some thoughts that Guild Wars 2 is going to be region-free, as in there are probably going to be European servers, and they're probably going to be North American servers, but you will be able to join them uh, sort of at will. That sounds pretty awesome. 
Indeed. Now, no more, no more not playing with friends. True, but I would <laughs> guess that world versus world server rotations are going to be within regions, right? That's got to be the case. Oh, we don't know. They didn't specify that. Well, I that. think it's it's probably like maybe um, you pick like a home server per se for your world versus world, like who you want to represent. And then you're only in... Well, no, I your... mean, if you're in a North American server, I mean, you're going to want to choose, you know, they've got to separate them by region for, for some, I mean, yeah. for ping reason, right? Well, would... the, only th the only thing they say is that you're only restricted by point of sale. Then that after that, you're free to play with your, your friends. So I'm assuming, like, you can buy it and then you can play wherever you want. If you right. want to pick, like, North America, you can do news. it. And that's the news. That's exactly the news right there, is if you are in Europe and you want to play with a North American guild or vice versa... Uh, you would be able to do that, you know, easily, is, is the news. Oh, here. I, okay. I the see. question yeah, I, and the thing I that I think is going to be the case is if you play on a North American server, you're only going to be matched against other North American servers. I mean, that only makes sense, right? Yeah, I think that that's kind of what they're getting at. You're, you have the freedom to choose whatever server you want, but, you know, you're still going to be locked out in the world versus world. I mean, it doesn't really make sense to have a Euro server versus a North American server because the time zone difference would be, you know, they'd all be attacking NPCs. <laughs> you know, maybe, do you think if... <laughs> If we ask them real nicely, they'll allow it just once so that Deuces and Team Legacy can fight each other? Because that <laughs> it'll, it'll, <laughs> epic battle. It's the eternal battle. battle. <laughs> it'll, hap it'll happen eventually. We'll either hold over until, like, their morning or they'll hold over until our morning. I guarantee you it'll happen. Well, that's what I'm saying. It won't happen if they're in different regions and they only match up North American servers against other North American servers. Then we'll never be matched up against a Deuces server if it's in Europe. Oh, I think it, I think um, it'd be great if if ArenaNet like once a year, sort of said like, this is the year wide world versus world actual like country versus country and tried to kind of set something up, like just once like, a year like let them oh, do that. Oh, that's actually brilliant! If you had world versus world, like have everybody split up on the servers by state in the U.S. and by country in the world, in Europe. <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> why? Yeah, it's that's geographical terrible. pride. That's why. Why do you vote for the for the Yankees? Not because they're good, but because you live near New York. That's the only reason. Fair enough. Oh, wow. <laughs> Fair enough. All right. <laughs> Moving I think, back. I think, uh, I think that's a really good piece of news, though, because it puts the control on the player, right? I mean, there, there are so many examples where region locking blocks a legitimate play concern, like, you know, maybe someone's in Europe, but they want to play on a North American server, you know, things like that. Maybe they're just, you know, there for a short term, like military, et cetera. Maybe they work the night shifts. And night they shift. can't play with their friends, so they need to play, you know. There you go. It would be very lonely if the only time that you could play is like 8 a.m. to 12 noon or something like that in, in the <laughs> Eastern time. Forever, forever alone. Forever alone indeed. So let's take a look at the next link we have on the news here. And this is not really news per se, but I thought it was really cool and worth checking out. Uh, this is a signature generator for Guild Wars 2, and I've got a link to this in the show notes, which, by the way, is in the description of the YouTube uh, video that you're watching, or it is also in the... Uh the website. Wow. Okay. There we go. The website. Uh, Tales it's of on the com. website. That's amazing. I never thought of that. that. That website. So this actually lets you do a lot of different cool things. Gives you different effects that you can. Uh, and then you can put it on. I don't know actually what this does. Yeah. It puts it on one side or the other. You can choose the size. Then you can choose class and say I'm going to put the class over here. And then maybe just make it a little transparent. Put some text in there. Be like. Ooh, jungle Fever, I like that, okay. The Boss. <laughs> That's the name, The Boss. And we're going to use uh, Moth Proof Script to use my, uh, my, my term, what do I say? Uh, um, I'm a bear. There we go. That's my, that's my, uh, that's my thing. And then uh, over here we can add butterflies, because why not? I'm an elementalist. Some gears. Uh, it's got a lot of different things you can do. You can add lines to give it some weird borders over here, do some different things. So it's very customizable. Highly recommend you check it out. It's very, very, uh, very cool. So I thought that was great. So if you're looking for a signature generator for Guild Wars 2 to show off how awesome your creative skills are, there you go. Bam. That'll do it for you. Now let's head back over to the next link that we've got here. And this is an amazing video by Total Biscuit, the Thief and Dynamic Events video. By far one of the best videos of any Guild Wars 2 video that I've seen. Uh, you guys saw this, I assume? Oh, yeah. Yes. yes. All right, Vega, 
tell me what you, what what about this video? Can you back me up? Is it like the not the most awesome video there is? Um, non -P I, let me say non PVP. It's just it's just good to see some like you know like higher end gameplay, I guess you could say, instead of just the usual crap that we're used to seeing. So it's good it's good to see see stuff. Especially, it seems like they've already, from the past beta event to this beta event, they've already changed things and taken, like, feedback into account, which I think is really good. Absolutely. All right, anybody else thoughts on the, on the TB video? Because I have a bunch of thoughts. I'll talk about it when you guys... It, it, it's nice to see a professional, like someone who actually does this for a living playing, who has, like, the equipment and the experience on how to, like, make these types of videos. And... The thing about me was his opinions on the game. Like, all weekend, we had been reading these opinions on, like, websites and Reddit and forums and stuff like that about people, like, raging and, like, people are, like, ripping each other apart over, like, how they feel about it. And it's nice to have somebody who's somewhat professional come out and say, yeah, you know, this is what I think. I'm showing you stuff. It feels really good. I really like the way it's going. We're going to see more in the future. C correction, yeah. I, I purposely stayed away from all the Reddit forums and all the other raging forums. So oh, come on! I, <laughs> I purposely As somebody avoided pointed them. it out, the <laughs> only people who would be willing to break the NDA are people that were, like, angry about something to begin with. So you have to remember you've got a small sample size there. If you're worried about that, just consider the fact that the people that, that don't want to risk breaking the NDA probably didn't go posting how awesome the game was. You know, that's, that's something to keep yep. in mind. Yeah, that's true. I think uh, that's a good point about you know Total Biscuit. You know, he's he's not a pro player, but he definitely knows a lot about game design. Uh, but more importantly, the thing I learned from that video is that the conjured weapons, I think they're called, the element, elementalists do, are amazing because yes. that one has a push skill, and push skills are just sound amazing. <laughs> I love every time you get to push something around. It's great. It's fantastic. I mean, it's such a simple equation, right? It's like. There are cliffs, and then there are push skills. This is going to be awesome. <laughs> I see where you're going with that. Um, so the things that I noticed in here was that it actually had a lot more voiced stuff going on in than I expected. I, I expected a lot of chat bubbles popping up saying, we have to defend the mill, you know, but not actually voiced. Something to add. <laughs> <laughs> background background bird. bird has his own opinion. I guess so. So the, uh, the there was much more voiced involved because when you know there was at least two or three lines of voice at the beginning of every uh, dynamic event segment, I guess, as it were. And let me see if I can't pull this up so you can get an idea of what I'm talking about here. The other thing that he pointed out that I kind of felt actually I thought it before he talked about it, which was really interesting, is there was one situation where and spoilers, guys, spoilers. He had to go and collect <laughs> eggs. For, or, no, he had to assist somebody who was going to collect devourer eggs. This guy was looking for a new pet, essentially. And what it said was, collect, you know, help such and such search through, you know, uh, devourer eggs at zero of five. And it's like, really? Why? How do I know that it's going to take him exactly five tries before he finds the egg he's looking for? That doesn't make any sense. My immersion! <laughs> My but immersion! That's the point that TB made, is that this is, you know, it's unnecessary UI information that the player doesn't need to know. And the only reason that it's there is for people that would be, like, doing it four times and going, Oh, I guess the event's broken and leave, I guess. <laughs> Is that what somebody going to do? I don't know. Or maybe, I mean, they think that they need to do some other kind of input, and so they need to know that, oh, no, there's actually pro progress happening here. I don't know. I, I didn't catch the part where it said they told his character they needed X amount of eggs left. I thought that was just... Just in the top right UI? I'm not sure yeah, if they said it directly the to player, his character. Yeah, informing the player, not the character. Oh, you got to have your head separated oh. two you got to be in two places at once. The now, UI is all player. The in-game action is character. Now, the other thing about this that is that it actually looked a lot more I mean, look at this. This looks a lot more difficult than I expected generic questing to be. He's getting his ass beat here and he gets down to like 200 health and he's almost dead. He has to limp away and the and, and there's one other player here that basically saves him by coming in you to did. to c pull him off. You didn't notice that one mob with the silver portrait? That That's what would be kind of a semi-elite in Warcraft. Oh, games the veteran. Right I didn't notice it. That's the one that was kicking his ass. <laughs> yeah. He's trying to get the NPCs up so that he can have a little breathing room here. And he's, yeah. I'm looking at this like heal skill. Heal skill. Oh, God, heal skill. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <laughs> NPC. 
<laughs> Instead, he's like, no, the NPC is more important. It just happened to end the, uh, the whole thing right there. So see and now on the right, this is what he's talking about. Devour nests examined, zero of five. That's just another event that just popped up, happened to be nearby. But it says zero of five, and it's just like, my immersion. It doesn't need to be there. There's some quests that, sh that it makes sense for you to know. Others, it would be better if I was just left in the dark. I know you can keep, keep uh, you know, two heads about it, but eh, I kind of agree with him there. It's not a big deal. Now, here's another crazy cool thing. And this is another part that comes towards the end of this video. And by the way, I'm just skipping through here, but I highly recommend you guys check this whole thing out. Search for Guild Wars 2 Beta, Thief Gameplay, and Dynamic Events. There's also a link in the show notes. But this is fantastic. Let me see if I can't get to the later part of the video. Because many of the events within Guild Wars 2 are things like this. They're events where killing is sort of ancillary to what you have to do. Now, if you look at the top right of the screen here, you see that the goal is to pick up pieces of scrap metal, not to kill the bad guys. Now, you can get the scrap metal from the ground. You can kill a raccoon for some reason. You can get the scrap metal from the ground, <laughs> or you yeah, can kill cool. enemies and get scrap metal off their body. But you don't get credit for that until you go and turn it in. So he just picked up a piece of scrap metal right there. Now he has a bunch of scrap metal on his person. He doesn't get credit for it and credit for helping complete the event. This bar over here doesn't go up. The event doesn't get closer to completion until he goes and turns it in. And for this whole thing, I'm thinking to myself, oh God, oh God, it gets closer and closer to the end. He keeps getting you know stuff and he's never turning it in. And I'm going, Oh, he's going to miss it, because if this thing completes and he hasn't turned in the whole thing yet, he's going to rage, because he's not going to get any credit, he's not going to get any XP, right? And then, then he finally figures out, oh, I need to go turn this into this guy. And so he gets over there, he turns it in, but when it completes, it gives everybody else an entire minute to go over there and turn in the stuff. And yeah. that... He just goes, wow, that's awesome. That's amazing. And I was thinking the same thing in my own head. We're like the same person. <laughs> and I think... Uh, yeah, another except, thing he, is, except he's British. Yeah. Um, <laughs> except think, for uh, that, that, but you know, could be anything. I could be British too. You <laughs> don't know. No, definitely yeah, not. Definitely we just not. lost all of our British viewers. Well, in that in that example, though, I think uh, I think actually, though, if you turn them in after it's filled, you'll still get you still get a reward. Um, because obviously they don't want to induce rage. That's bad. Um, but you know, I think it's really it's a really really cool aspect that I think is also present in uh, the heart the heart system, um, where it sort of puts the the choice in the player's hands. Like, do I want to kill stuff or do I want to go gather stuff? And you may be accomplishing the same goal, but you know, you have a choice. The game's all about choices. That's for sure. Oh yeah. All right. So. Let's see what we can get to next here. Oh, bunnies. This is a huge deal breaker for me. Oh, bunnies gosh. are not oh, immune to grenades, but they <laughs> are immune to explosives. Explain that, ArenaNet. Explain that. You can see it clearly right at the beginning of the TV video. Some kind of uh, joke about Monty Python in there. I don't know. Moving on. <laughs> wow. Uh, let's see. Uh, now, this is really interesting. In addition to that, Total Biscuit put out a podcast, 42 minutes long, just an audio file, actually, not really a podcast, about him talking about his experience in the beta. And it's really interesting. Some of the highlights that I got from that... New elite skills are in the beta. We, we saw some of the racial ones in another video. I think I got a link to that in there as well. The cash shop, he's not allowed to talk about, but that's specifically because it says in the NDA, this is all subject to change. You're not allowed to talk about it. So I know people have been freaking out about the cash shop. We're going to talk about that a little bit later. But as of right now, we, all we know is that there's some information that got leaked out, but that all of that information, you have to take it with a massive grain of salt. And we'll talk about all that in a bit. Um, now, Great. I think you were talking about, or Vega was talking about how Reddit was blowing up and people were all like, basically, the complaint I heard the most is, this thing's all button mashing. Is that what you yep. saw? That's what I saw. A lot of. <laughs> Essentially, people are saying, it, well, you just hit your skills as soon as they're off cooldown and that's it. And that's why it's like a wow rotation. It's terrible. Rawr. Sure, if you're fighting one mob at a time. If no, they, they, even even if you're fighting one mob at a time, it's definitely not button mashing. They There's said no, it was even worse than button mashing because they, like it is their abilities. It is so much more in depth than it's just like, button. My wands, my wands on auto attack. Why can't I do anything else? <laughs> It's it's because it's the fact that you don't have that that mana pool and that all you're worried about is the 
the the cooldowns that it gives you so much more in terms of what you could do for combo wise you know because you're not worried about oh well i have this really strong skill but oh i don't have mana after this combo so i got i can't do it now even though it's off a cooldown so you know when you when you take out that mechanic it opens up so many different things and even if you're fighting one thing there's still like it the combat is what you make it yeah you could sit there and just one one two three <laughs> Two, one. I or think you the could point like, that they're making is run that around and do and do more. The point that they were making though is that the game doesn't force you to do that. That you can beat most of the content because it's so easy just by mindlessly wanting your way around. Yeah. <laughs> wanting one has just become a verb. Um, so <laughs> that and then, and then I think also the sidekicking system makes it so that the, the the combat, no matter where you are, is always a little bit challenging and engaging. And that's actually what I was remarking about in the in the Total Biscuit video because I was really concerned that you know even though it does have the whole scaling system, you know you're going to scale down to max level for the for the zone and it's going to be kind of trivial for people that know what they're doing. But you know even then you can't let your guard down as the TB video shows. Now one of the things that I noticed in this trend is like Friday and early Saturday, there were all kinds of people posting doom and gloom and the end is near because it's <laughs> button mashing city and that's the worst thing ever. And yeah, then transitioning exactly night and Sunday were people coming on that were going, I've been playing for 48 hours straight. And that's the only reason I didn't respond to these allegations. <laughs> but I can tell you that they're completely wrong. Yeah, and, I mean, it's, it's kind of ahead. obvious, right? If, you, if you're in the beta, are you really going to spend time making a really thoughtful post against, you know... Especially if you're editor? having a good old time. Yeah. It's kind of a no-brainer. So, <laughs> specifically, the quote I got from the Total Biscuit podcast is he said, quote, Some people argue that the combat isn't challenging. That is nonsense. Unquote. So... That, I think, <laughs> says it <laughs> exactly. in so many words. There was also quite a few really passionate uh, responses on Reddit from people saying, I think these people are referring to just levels like one through five because it definitely gets more challenging the further you get into the PvE area. And so many people were really just doing the PvE content. And everybody was saying that the PvP content has a challenging and interesting combat system. So that's very reassuring. I think also it's the fact that in the earlier levels, it's because the game is so different than anything that's been made yet in terms of MMOs, they want people to get accustomed to, you know, the whole active combat system. So they're not just going to throw you into the hardest fights. They're, they're kind of like building you up and letting you learn things as it happens. Yeah. Accessibility. That's like the key word that they always toss yeah. around, I think. But I think it's almost too accessible in the fact that nobody's learning. They're kind of just like, I can win! <laughs> That's what I'm saying. They got to like, replace. Just, Fuck, I'm done. I, I agree. <laughs> Ignorance is bliss, man. <laughs> they got to replace the entire skill bar with dodge until they figure out how to use it. Yes! yes. <laughs> I'm Do telling it. you, that's the solution. It has to be in there somewhere. Like, if you never dodge by level 10, for the entirety of level 10, you only get dodge. <laughs> <laughs> Every time you dodge, you get a regular skill bar for about 60 seconds. And if you don't dodge again for 60 <laughs> seconds, your skill bar changes back to dodges. <laughs> put, put the image up. Put the image up. Uh, let me find it. Hang on. It's in here somewhere. Hoop. Zing, zing, zing. I, and I <laughs> you blink it. blinked it like 17 times. <laughs> I know. Oh, this image. It's a great image. I'd All link right. it to the chat, but the permissions reset. Oh, jeez. Noob, press here. That's the one button. Everyone else, learn to use these skills. Put it up. Put it up. <laughs> it's up there right now, man. It's up there. It's, uh, like... it's so true, though. Everybody's like, I'm going to make this my avatar in the game. <laughs> <laughs> so, one of the other things uh, that I noticed is every single reaction from the people that did decide to break the NDA the thing that everyone said, and I mean every single post, that was even more than two sentences, was the thing that blew me away was how amazing, how amazingly gorgeous this world is. The cities, massive, beautiful, detailed, they feel alive. The countryside, the backgrounds, the far distance, it all feels like a real world, a living, breathing world that just looks Better than Skyrim is how I heard somebody say it, which is very high praise. I'm a PvP kind of guy, but I still got an explorer side of me, and that literally 
gives me just instant goosebumps. I feel yeah, like I, just, I can play the game when I watch one of those videos in 1080. Just move my mouth. I know, and, right? Did you <laughs> see <playing>. that? <laughs> Somebody put a video. It's like five minutes of a character just standing there watching a uh, windmill turn in the background <laughs> and people walk around in front of it. And it's just like, just use this whenever you really want to play Guild Wars 2. Just put this full screen and sit there for five minutes. It'll, it'll calm I you think, down. They've really, <laughs> put, they've really put so much detail into these things. And you, it... it you can see it everywhere. Just watching all these videos, it's like you can't even find two trees that look similar or look the same. Like even the trees, they have different branches coming off of them. That's and what everybody was saying. Even, the trees even don't the look little cloned. tiny things like that. It's not just like, oh, well, that's a tree and it looks like that tree. It's like everything's different. Even the trees, everything is just so much different. Procedural dynamic building. Um, anyway, the other thing that, that he said is, quote, button mashing. That's an absurd suggestion. So that is great. I'm so really emotive. happy to hear that from him. Let's see. He's, He's so emotive. What did I just say? Uh, he was very impressed by the dynamic event system, as you can see in that video, by the way. He is gushing over that thing the whole time. And the reason I like Total Biscuit is because when you watch him play other games, he will complain a Yahtzee style about a game that really deserves it. Yahtzee complains about every game except Portal, apparently, and, and the Orange Box. Like, that's the only game he never had a criticism about. But Total Biscuit will have criticisms. He will tell you, this is a terrible part of the game, and this is what they need to change. And he was gushing over Guild Wars 2, and specifically the dynamic event system. He talked about how it made him feel like the world was really happening around him, and that he went to play the personal story version, and was very sort of disheartened or, or just completely uninterested because it's so straightforward linear standard RPG storytelling and it wasn't like go explore and find things that happen to be awesome it was here's the thing you have to do and here's the dialogue that's happening and so as a result he was like meh personal story let's go see what's going on so yeah. that actually I, has I, a lot to say yeah. about the dynamic events I, I think that there's a huge you know watching the dynamic events and the uh, the heart what are they called heart quests Heart the areas. heart quest, renown areas. Oh, yeah, renown. So, like, I think. there's just it just it flow. It looks like it flows so well in that you could just go to a the renown area, the heart quest, and then go to the next heart quest, and you don't have to go out there and do a quest, then run back to town and hand in the quest, and then go back out and then run back. It's just you could just keep on going and progressing, and the flow. It just it looks like it feels incredible because even when you're running between renown areas all of a sudden a dynamic event pops up and then there's something else you get to do. So I think that's probably why, in my opinion, why he may not like this, the, the personal story because the personal story it is, it's just you go and talk to a guy, you go do something, then you go back and talk to that guy, then you do something, then you go back and it's, it's all a, a back and forth and it's not a nice flow like the dynamic events in the Renown areas. Yeah, and, and, the, and that's something I actually should point out is a lot of people were trying to point out that the very interesting thing about the heart system and the, how it's different from dynamic events. Hearts are basically static quests for all intents and purposes that everyone can participate in and they fill up like, so I have all these hearts in the world and they all start unfilled. And when I complete them, they're completed for me. And they're sort of like, you know, a quest that is always there. It doesn't change the world a whole lot. That's why they're not exactly dynamic events per se. So you go over there, you help the farmer pick up the cows or whatever. It's just an event that's always there. Dynamic events may or may not be there. They may be on different stages, etc., etc. So hearts are basically things that, uh, you know, an NPC, scout can point you to and say go over there I think that guy needs some help with his farm and that will always be there so he can always point you in that direction and on your way there and in those heart areas other dynamic events are happening around you and that's what they use to get you to go and explore and, and come across these dynamic events so that's a really cool you know, system and we've, we've known about that but a lot of people thought the hearts were dynamic events and they actually are two distinctly different things so I thought I'd mention that <clears throat> Next up, this is one of the coolest things ever. Uh, this is a German video, you can tell. This is great. Look at the range on this cannon. 
I would love to be sitting up here. Just imagine, like, let me let me turn. Look at him. He's fired. Look, you can shoot people way down there. Then you shoot them the whole time they're coming up that that road towards your castle. Like you just rain and fire down on them with this cannon. That's just amazing range on that. I can't wait to play this world versus world. <laughs> That's just it's so shaping up cool. to be really good. Like, there's some other videos out there, and they just are amazing. Like, we finally see trebuchets in action in World vs. World, and they are amazing. Like, the stuff that people are already doing with them in beta. Yeah, yeah I mean, and, and there's, I think I'm going to try to get it earlier in this video, they show the guy using the cannon on a group of enemy players, and it actually does quite a bit of damage. I think 5, it does... 5,000. Yeah, like 5,000, yeah. which is about a quarter of their life, usually, if you estimate that people have about 20,000 health in, in World vs. World. So, if you hit them with four cannon shots, see you later. Bye. This is yeah, definitely. The, the trebuchets and the siege combat is, is so cool. I mean, they've, they've, there was a video that showed, um, actually, a trebuchet you know, being set up in a tower, and it's on the tower wall, and it's attacking the gate on a keep, which is a, you know, a larger objective. And it was just, like, the most epic thing I've ever seen. I'm very excited about that. Yep, yep, I can't wait. So there's another one, and this is a very cool video I think you guys should definitely check out because they added uh, some more racial elites into the game, which I don't know if they were in the last press beta, but this is Yogg's cast, and let me jump this in here. They've got the Hounds of Balthazar here, yeah. and I'm only going to show a couple <laughs> of these, but I recommend you check out all of them. But here's something that I thought was really weird. Uh, I love how they do their little jump and bounce fire, and when he goes on to the <laughs> next one, though... They're, they're just like, oh god, drop explosions, and then hey, look, we're gonna kill this forest boar, and then the hounds of Balthazar said, oh no, ah. it's too much for us. So <laughs> I kind of hope that they fix that animation. Like they should like disappear in a gout of fire and go back to the hell where they came from or whatever. But that's kind of disappointing. But there's a lot of other cool <laughs> stuff here. I just gotta gotta. Yes! Yes! I'm a bear! Yes! <laughs> I can't well, wait to make a Norn a bear. Away. A Norn bear, a Norn warrior. I'm gonna make a Norn and name him Voli. And then you can you can fill in the rest. Um, <laughs> we so, have a bear song that we found. The bear song. No, not the wait, bear song. Wait, there's a the bear song? No, we're not playing that. Here's a really <laughs> weird one. The... <laughs> The, the raven for the Norn. You can be the That's raven. That's just scary. That's a scary mother. You would not want to see that thing coming at you. That's Across why it's world scary. World. We uh, also I think know... I've had nightmares with something like that. I know, right? World vs. World, by the way, I believe somebody confirmed that the racials will be allowed in World vs. World. Now, they we, also we, have the char we've racials seen and other footage. things. We've seen them in footage. Yep. We have seen them in footage. Uh, they have the char racials and some other things in there. The char bros is what the char reinforcements are called, and they have the, the so char you're, you're Zuka. Not, you're not going to show the char Zuka? It, uh, listen, it's the Yogg's cast video. I highly recommend everybody go check it out. I'm not going to just stream their whole video on our <laughs> podcast. That's not cool. Uh, but let's see. Now, the other thing I wanted to mention is that a whole lot of stuff has changed, right? Engineer trait lines have been changed around. We know that the Mesmer staff skill has changed. The number one used to do something, number two used to do something else. They combined those into one, and now the two yep. does something else entirely. There's new major traits, new elites, etc. So basically a month worth of work clearly has paid off. Uh, but... There's no Silvari, no Asura. There's still missing elites. Still needs a lot of optimizations. That's one of the things everybody's saying. The FPS is still kind of like iffy. It's still kind of low, lower than they'd expect. So when's this thing coming out, guys? What's speculation? Give me some speculations. Ooh. Based on this sort of incompleteness, we can't see past level 30. No Silvari, no Asura. Clearly, they're missing some, some icons in the UI in some places. What are we doing? I, I'm guessing... Um, July-ish. Like, Ooh. mid to end July hmm. is what I'm guessing. And I guess that because... So if the pre-orders start um, April 10th, and they're saying that you're going to be part of every beta after April, um, and how long is it between the, the last beta and this beta? It was almost a month, right? About a month, yeah. So, I mean, they're not, they're not going to let you pre-order and then give you, like... A beta or two. Um, I'm ex I'm expecting like they're gonna have April, May, and June to really nail down everything and get a few more betas with a lot more people in there. And I'm looking. I'm guessing July-ish time frame. 
Yeah, I mean, I'm I'm tempted to say June, just you know, out of optimism, but I think July yeah, is more realistic. I said Please, May out of say... optimism at the beginning of the year, and I think that's slipping past in my mind's eye. <laughs> just I think all of us were hoping like April 28th. Come on, just do it on Guild Wars' birthday. We all know it'll happen, but nah. <laughs> No, nope, I'll have a beta. I'll have a beta weekend that weekend. <laughs> yeah, that's probably a beta. Yeah, weekend. yeah, there's a good birthday celebration. Yeah. Uh, the Kenigmatic says, "Do you guys think that there are going to be limited amounts of pre-purchases?" I don't think so. No. Why would there be oh, limited oh. amounts? They uh, want to sell as have... many as they possibly can. <laughs> why would? Why wouldn't they take our money? Collectors. It's all digital. Limited amounts of us already paying full for the game, even though it's not in our hands yet. Um. That has the investors drooling. It's so good. <laughs> yep, absolutely. Uh, you know, I, I think like I think once they saw that they got a million people to sign up for the beta, they're like, "Holy crap! People really want to play this game. <laughs> let's get, let's just let's just make this pre-purchase just so desirable that everyone's money. just gonna do it. Because even if you just do the normal game, you do the pre-purchase, it's you know sixty bucks. You still get That's still you know the three-day head start and all the betas. You'd be stupid not to do that if you're going to get the game anyway. Yeah. That's, on they the, just, on that they same... just made themselves like $60 million because that, of the million that, sign Yes, <laughs> but also, that, that's knows. money directly to NCSoft slash ArenaNet with no third parties in the middle, right? You, know, you don't have a yeah. GameStop, you yeah. don't have a GameSpot, you don't have an Amazon taking any money out of that. So that pre-purchase concept is pretty brilliant. Right. But it's also higher than you'd expect because there is no third party. They still can't sell it at a different price than their third-party publishers, or Amazon might say, screw you, we're not selling your game if you're undercutting us online for that much. <laughs> so we'll have to see. Uh, April 10th is eh, not too far away. But the, that comes with a side effect, um, something that many people aren't looking at because Arena has just delivered kind of so well thus far. That game really does have to release um, September, maybe early fall at the latest. Otherwise, you've just paid full money for a game that you don't own. That's yeah. Pretty... That ta I, I, I honestly, nope. like, I, like you guys said, I can't see it coming past July. It can't possibly come past it July. Could. It could. They, they, no, I don't they, think so. They have, they have said, you know, back when they were talking, when they had that, that quarterly call, they were saying how they, they don't want to release this late. They know that <laughs> they know they know who their gamers are. They know who their gamers are and they know they know the trends of gaming. And let's face it, no one has school in July. Everyone is off from school in July. Everyone is going to be playing games in school. July. What's the school or, thing you speak of? Uh, July, July, August, everyone is off from school. If you release a game then, it gives everyone if like think about it. If if school starts and kids are like, if you have that one kid who's kind of on the fence, like, oh, you know, I got a lot of stuff to do this semester, or blah, blah, blah. He might be hesitant to get the game. If he's got to get the game, he's going to play you a game. You know the summer is when you're supposed to be outside, right? Shh. <laughs> uh, I got a window. I opened my window. Sun's trying to kill, it, trying to kill me. Srotovac like, says, I wish Freelancer was here because he would tell us something true and depressing. <laughs> <laughs> Ah, uh, chat room for the win. Too optimistic. Fan. That is my new favorite fan. Uh, I'm thinking, and it seems pretty clear to me, we're going to have a beta event the weekend after the weekend after the pre-purchase date. So the 10th is the pre-purchase date. That weekend, the 14th, is too soon, I think, for a, pre for, for a pre-purchase beta event. However, the 21st seems like a really good weekend to do it. And then uh, we'll probably have another one two to three weeks after that, Wait. probably in May. And then okay. we Get might one have perfect. one more at the end of May, early June, and then we'll probably see a release. That's my prediction right now. I could be wrong. Maybe they'll have to have another one or two in June before they release in July. But I'm predicting early June release uh, and at least two beta events, perhaps three. I'm April, sticking May, with that. April, April, May, June, either release late June or release early July. So, um, <laughs> Grey Wolf is trying to predict <laughs> freelancers. 
<laughs> saying. I, as you as you started laughing, I knew exactly what you were reading. Yeah, right. <laughs> All right. Stop stop reading the chat room. Stop reading the chat room and go get to the get to the get to get to the get to the get to the bridge or rant, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, because you know what? Oh, here we go. Everybody's been asking about it, and uh, you know, oh, it just makes it me angry just by just by thinking about it, really. Um, so some of you may know, when I get a little frustrated watching people in the press play the game. When I get a little frustrated, a little bit upset, I gotta vent, and when I vent, it's called a Bridger rant. Ladies and gentlemen, let's take off our video goggles and watch this right here, some Ranger footage from someone who doesn't seem to know where their heel key is. He's clicking on his skills. Oh, better click that one button, buddy, otherwise you'll never be able to reach it because your fingers are on the arrow keys for some reason. Um, no, no, he has two hands on the mouse. Two hands on the mouse, apparently. He never hit his heel button in the entire fight. He kept dying, getting knocked back <laughs> that whole time. Uh, very new, interesting new little tool tip there, which is good to see how you get killed. Uh, apparently, this guy's not going to read it. He's just going to close it. Don't care how I lost. Uh, then he goes into the fight again with his bird. I now hate all bird rangers, just from this video, because later on, he's going to enter a fight, and he's going to be attacking a downed player. Let me see if I can't find him attacking a downed player here, because that, that, how that many... Was, it, was, it was in the cave. It was in the cave. We'll get to the cave eventually. This guy makes his way into combat. He's attacking a downed player. And it says right there on his screen, press F to finish, press F to finish, press F to finish. And you can hear him talking to you on the camera going, wow, these guys take a long time to kill, but I've got to burn them down before they get back up again. Got they it, can't it, get up it. if they're being attacked by you, and there's a button that says finish them! Right there! It's right there, buddy! See it? Stop whacking him with your one key! Stop hitting the one! He's just clicking the one key down here! What is he doing? Hit the finish button! He sits there for 12 seconds! I can't believe it! I don't understand it! How can he not see that? That, and that implies that this guy... Well, okay, maybe... Maybe he doesn't know what he's doing because he hasn't played a whole lot of MMOs before. Because maybe he's with, you know, Forbes magazine or is this MMORPG.com? Oh my god. Did he decide to just phone this in? I mean, if I was making a video, I'd try to go through like three or four of these games, getting a handle of everything that I'm doing before making a video. I don't know. Maybe it's just me, guys. But this frustrated the hell out of me because I wanted to press access. I could have done something much better. Anyway, I got out all yep. the. There we go. That was for me on there. He kept begging me to do that. I didn't want to do that. I don't think it's going to make a very good rant, but maybe it did, maybe it didn't. If it didn't, I'm sorry, guys. It was. I think, I think I it's one of the best to. rants yet. The, the whole thing is we didn't see you. We saw the bad footage, so we had to just close our eyes and listen. <laughs> and imagine the Richard <laughs> ranting. This way till it was over. Elites are for bads. He never uses his elite either. <laughs> I don't think he even slots one. Uh, he doesn't. He didn't slot an elite. That's right. That was the joke. That's the joke. So, oh. alrighty then. I mean, Moving maybe on. he had maybe he had like one hand, one eye, and he couldn't really see, and, <laughs> and he was he line. had to click on stuff, and then he couldn't read things, and I, I don't know. This guy covers number of games for MORPG.com. I don't know if they'd hire a guy like that. That's illegal, my no, here. It was probably like. <laughs> 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 yeah, the uh, Americans with Disabilities Act was passed in 1960, so uh, actually I don't know when it was passed, but you know, maybe. Um, let's see here. Uh, this is the next big thing, I think. Uh, we're all frustrated by the um, essentially skillless nature of many of the press members, uh, but uh, this is, this, this is, it happens. There's nothing we can do about it. Let's, uh, let's move on here to Mike O'Brien on microtransactions in Guild Wars 2. Now, this came at an auspicious time, a very interesting time. There was a thread on Guru last week that people were saying, oh, there's this thing called gems in the game, and we think it has something to do with the microtransaction store. And other people are saying, it's just a rumor. We haven't heard anything about it. Nobody said it. There's nothing in the press beta, blah, blah, blah. It was back and forth, back and forth. Suddenly, a wild Martin Kirsten pops up in the thread and says, we're going to have a post about this later on tomorrow. So that was interesting. And then we get this post about microtransactions, and we learn a little bit more about the gem system. Here are some very key points in this thing. He says, as far as ArenaNet is concerned, quote, 
it is never okay for players to buy a game and not enjoy what they paid for without additional purchases. And it is never okay for players who spend money to have an unfair adventure advantage over players who spend time. That's the kind of thing that I would expect to hear from a free-to-play game. But, you know, I shouldn't have to spend time doing something I don't want to do in order to enjoy the game fully. Wait, ask that again? Okay. What he says is it's never okay for players who spend money to have an unfair advantage over players who spend time. What if I don't have money or time? Am I just SOL? <laughs> then you're hopeless. Sorry, then guy. Then you better be really good. Cause... Why are you playing MMOs? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, so you're saying seriously. <laughs> somebody well, who doesn't I mean, have money still, or time is not the target time, market? Right? It's just that, <laughs> yeah. You still have time. It's just that your time is spread out over a much longer period. <laughs> So you're uh, going to be spending your time, the little that you have, you know, to, to do that if you don't have money, I guess. Well, no, the way Guild Wars 2 is designed is um, you don't have to be there for the entire event. You just show up for as long, and as long as you participated in some way, you'll get a contribution. So you won't be as fast as the guy that spends 24 hours on day one, but you'll get there. Yeah. So, I mean, to me... What he's saying there is, oh, it's okay. If you don't have money to spend on our gem system, you can just grind gold for a while if you want to buy something in there. And uh, uh, that's just... I don't like that. And I'll get more about that in a second. So those are two very important pieces, though. What he does basically say is that it's not going to be pay to win. Right? That's, that's the idea. Is Everybody's com concerned that somebody who happens to have a lot of money is going to suddenly have an artificial advantage simply because of their economic status. Nobody wants that, obviously. So, <clears throat> this, he goes into gold, karma, and gems. He says Guild Wars 2 has three currencies. I, <laughs> I made a chart that suggests there's quite a few more. <laughs> so let's open that up and we'll talk about this for a little just, bit. Just here. maybe. Just maybe. So, uh, I said that there's gems... Gold, bind on equip items, karma tokens, and glory are all different uh, currencies, essentially. Uh, and, and, I mean, do you guys agree or disagree with that? Looks good. Uh, I mean, I, I, got, well, like... I don't know if glory could be considered a currency, since you can't really, like, trade it with anyone. Oh, so now like currency trade. needs to be traded in order to be called a currency. Ah, oh, we're changing the definition of oh, currency. That's, that's the no. whole point. We have to have an um, open economy. Oh, no, 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 you're well, right. You might tradable. be right. It just has to be used to get further things. Yeah, yeah, you do trade it for special items from the glory store. <laughs> I mean, I... <laughs> the glory store. That doesn't sound right at all. Old glory. I, mean, I, I, definitely, I definitely agree with your chart. I like your chart. I just, from his point of view, that it's, you know, equipment and that stuff isn't really currency, you know? Fair enough, fair enough. So, karma, coins, and gems. And uh, we've got gold sinks here. Do you like the gold sinks? I like, I like that. I like that image. Gold <laughs> sinks. That's why I just put these all it's into just Google. A ship. <laughs> no, no, no. That's that's, that's, a, that's a that's a that's gold, a um, gilded sink, sir. That's the that gold is a gold. sink which is gilded. One just went in. <laughs> I had Fancy fun putting this piece. together, but I had to put each of these in a different layer. Every arrow, every section is in a different layer, and then I had to change them all. Watch the video; it's crazy. So anyway, so we're talking about the gem system here now. We'll talk about what gems can buy you in just a second, but right now we know you can spend cash to get gems, right? And gems can be used to purchase these items in the gem store. Gems can also be traded directly to other players for coin, that is gold, as you might know it. Coin is the actual correct term because it could be gold, it could be silver, it could be copper. Anyway, you trade the gems to other players for their gold. This is not a, a like you go to an NPC and say, I have these gems, give me gold. You're actually trading it with other players, which means the exchange rate between coin and gems is going to be based upon how many hours players are willing to grind for a certain amount of money's worth of gems. I'm guessing it's going to be below minimum wage, but that's just me. Um, so, <laughs> wow. I mean, but, that, that so exchange rate is going to change. One question with the gems, is it actually like... I got to open up a trade window with someone, or is it something like, do you, have you played Spiral Knights? I have not played Spiral Knights. Explain. How it's, it's, um, it's not like 
because they have a similar currency where they have the, you have a uh, one currency that you pay for with real money and you could trade that currency for in-game gold. And for that, it's not like you take the real money currency and open up a trade window with someone to get that. It's like you go to the trading post, let's say, and there's a currency exchange rate at that time that says if you give me 10 gems, you get 1,000 gold or whatever it is. I think essentially what um, what you're talking about where you, you go into a trade window and it's going to show basically, let's say you want to sell gems. You go into the, you, you pay some cash, you get some gems, and you want to get some gold for them. So you go into this window and you say, I want to sell gems. Well, it's going to show you that um, Great here is selling uh, one gem for 50 gold. Oku is selling one gem for 51 gold. And Clint is, uh, uh, Malkir is here is selling uh, one gem for 52 gold, for example. Now, you could choose to undercut them and try to sell the gold to somebody for 49 gold. Right, sell the gems to somebody for 49 gold a piece. And that would change the exchange rate because you're offering less than what they are offering. Now, if a lot of people suddenly buy the gems, now Malkir's is the only one in the store and the value of gems is actually 52 gold each. Right? Does that make sense? How the, how the value changes based on how, much, how many are, are in the store. Because if more get put in the store, they constantly undercut each other, like an auction house style system that you'd think of in World of Warcraft. But if a lot of people buy them from the store, now they are disappearing and only the higher value ones are left. So that changes the exchange rate over time. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Yep. Yeah. Yep, I see what you're saying. You also have to realize, like, I think some people are going to trade gems for other things, too, outside of gold. So, like, let's say I help somebody with a... I help somebody I know in real life, and he's like, oh, I just bought, like, $20 worth of gems. Here's, like, two or three or four gems for helping me. So, like, it's going to fluctuate in so many different ways outside of, like, just coin currency. Um, that might be true. The question is, can you trade or, you know, mail gems to people? That's, that's an important question. Because if you can't, um, well, I guess we, we don't really know, do we? If, if gems are something that's in your inventory, or if it's just a thing that's on your character in the same way coin is on your character, and whether they'll let you mail gems to each other. Uh, yeah, so that's an interesting question. question. We don't know that yet. I mean, it might have been, maybe somebody in the beta knew, but I, I, I have not seen that in any of the information that we've seen so far. Um, so that, I believe, is how gems and coin interact. And that is actually uh, one of the things I wanted to cover because some people in the chat room, how many people in the chat room are familiar with the EVE Online trading system and how many people are not familiar with the EVE Online trading system? I'm curious. How many of you guys understand the trading system that's going to be in Guild Wars 2? Send me, send me a, a 1 if you understand, a 0 if you, if you have not heard that the bird is the word. <laughs> the bird, bird, bird. The bird, bird, the word. All right, there's, got, there's a lot of people in here that don't, uh, don't seem to be super familiar with Eve, so I'll try to explain it. It's, it. I did explain it in the in the video as well, so if you guys want to check that out, that would be good. Here's the deal. Uh, the way that the system is going to work is just like any other system in Guild Wars, uh, in Guild Wars 1 or, or, or uh, uh, World of Warcraft, if you want to sell an item, then you can go to the store and you can sell that item for a little bit less than the guy who's selling it. Let's say uh, Vega. Vega's selling uh, you know, a stack of silk cloth for two gold. I could go in there five and gold. list. All right, he's selling it for five gold. I could Ten list gold. my silk cloth for four gold and 99 silver, right? That's a standard World of Warcraft style auction house. You kind of all understand that. And the other option that I have, though, if I'd rather not wait for, the in, for, for somebody to come and buy that silk, also on that interface is a list of people who are willing to buy that right now. So Great needs silk cloth. He's been trying to level up his tailoring or whatever clothing it. there is. So he went in there and he posted a buy order and he said, I'm willing to buy, you know, 40 silk cloth for uh, four gold and 20 silver each, right? And so I can go in there and evaluate Okay, do I want to list this for 4 gold, 99 silver, and have to wait for the money, wait for somebody to come and buy it from me? Or do I want to sell it directly for great for a lower price and get less money? I can get less money now or make more money later. So that's my option as a seller. As a buyer, 
it's exactly the opposite, but I have the same kind of decision. I could either right now buy directly from Vega, who's selling his for five gold, right? Or I could put a buy order out and said, I'm willing to buy this for four gold and 21 silver. And I will, instead of undercutting, overcut the guy who's got the highest buy order so that the next person that wants to sell will sell directly to me. So it's a very interesting system and it allows both the buyer and the seller to have a lot of control over where the very interesting market that goes back and forth throughout the game. So that hopefully that explains it somewhat. If you if you want to learn more about it, I kind of went in slightly more in depth in the video that's in the show notes on www.talesofteria.com or in the description of the YouTube video here. So Having said all that, does that make sense to you guys? I assume you guys are all familiar with the EVE Online system. Your video Famili helps. I'm actually not. The video, so the video familiar. helps. Familiar, probably, yes. Yeah. Experienced, definitely not. So it, it really does give a lot more power to the buyers in that system. And it's no longer an auction house because there's no bidding at all. It's really just, I'm willing to sell this for this much. If you don't want to pay it, you can put a buy order for less and see if somebody else fills your order. So it's a very interesting system, and there's the, a lot of crafting materials and things in there that you can do. So I like that because I definitely tend to buy more than I sell. <laughs> <laughs> whether, whether it be for myself or it's like, oh, that's cheap. Buy that. Here you go, friend. <laughs> so all that having been said, let's talk about specifically what you can buy with gems converted into currency because that's what everybody's – there's actually two aspects to things that people are worried about. They say, oh, well, the stuff that you can buy in the gem store is a problem because it gives other player, it gives you an advantage, and that's pay to win. We'll cover that in a second. First, I really want to talk about this, what people have been talking about. Okay, cash to gems, gems to coin. Now, you can spend coin on gold sinks, but that seems useless. I mean, how many sinks do you need? Or you can spend that coin on bind on equip items. You can go into the uh, trading post and say, ah, that's an awfully nice frozen mallet you got there. I'll take that from you. Uh, now, Malkier, why is, is this a problem or why is this not a problem? For the coin to BOE? Yeah, if, if I spend $100 on, on, you know, gold, and I now can buy whatever I want from the trading post. <laughs> I will be rich and powerful. Why is, th is that a problem or is it not a problem? First off, I don't see the, strong, the strongest items in the game being find on equip items. Ding, 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 ding. You've hit it in one, sir. I think that's exactly it. But the other thing is that everybody, and this is something that not everybody knows, everybody has access to buy the most powerful gear as soon as you hit level 80 for cheap. You can go to a vendor and get gear with the highest possible stats in, in the whole game, right? That's the plateau, the power plateau that everybody's talking about, right? The question is, how schmexy can you look? That's exactly the question. <laughs> now, there are probably a lot of really cool items that are bind on equip uh, at level 80, but probably the best and the coolest will actually be bind on pickup, which if you are not familiar with those terms, I will explain them very briefly, but I do go into slightly more detail in the video. Bind on equip means when you try to equip this item, it will bind itself to your character and can no longer be traded to other players. You can still salvage that item for crafting materials and you can probably still sell it to an NPC vendor, but from then on, it is no longer in the Guild Wars 2 economy for all intents and purposes. You pull it out. And the reason that's important is because if items never left the economy, the auction house would be constantly flooded with more and more of the same items and they would become worthless over time. So that's why binding is important. Bind on equip items mean you find them and you can sell them at the auction house. Uh, bind on pickup, however, are items that once you get them, you may not trade them. And why that's important is for specifically prestige items. They've talked a lot about how if you go through dungeons, there will be armor sets specific to dungeons, right? Vega, you know, you're familiar with these, right? The token yeah. system? Talk yep. to us about that. How do you, is there any way so, that I can get this armor other than going through the dungeon? Um, I don't believe so, because you buy them with the tokens that you get from running the dungeons. Right. And so each, so each dungeon has its own set of armor. And its own tokens, too. Its own currency, and, I think. What's that? I think they each have a unique currency, like Ascalonian Catacombs give you sigils or something, and then another one gives you a different kind of currency, right? So yeah. you can turn it in for but, the armor. But each, but each dungeon has, you know, its own special-looking armor, you could say, right? Right. I'm, I'm not mistaken with that. And so um, 
I guess the good part about that is, is that so if you really like the way that that Ascalonian armor from that one dungeon looks, but you really like the stats of that one that you get from that level 80 dungeon, they have those items that you could get to make yourself look like that. But that's a whole different story. But but yes, in order to get those good bind on pick up items, you need to run the dungeons. You can't just go to the shop and buy them. And once you run the dungeons, you can put that cool armor on to prove I just beat the hardest dungeon ever or what have you. And, you know, that basically is so, sort of a badge of honor, right? That's the whole idea is to show, hey, I just beat the dungeons and look at the cool armor I got. But if Joe Schmo over there runs the dungeon and decides that armor looks like crap and sells it to, you know, G. Shmi on the auction house. Now G. Shmi's walking around with that armor. He never went through the dungeon. He can't even hit the one button, much less hit the dodge button. So now I'm wearing the same armor as G. Shmi, who's got a terrible name to go on along with all that. So yeah, oh, that's stupid. Say, I pity Joe Schmo and G. Shmi. <laughs> I don't know. But that's my point, is that these prestige items are supposed to be unique to people who do specific things. Specifically, Glory gets you special PvP skins that you wouldn't be able to get unless you acquired a certain amount of glory. Tokens from dungeons get you certain special cool looking gear. Karma will get you cool looking gear for completing dynamic events. So that's what bind on pickup items are. And notice that you cannot get those cool looking items with gold. Nowhere in this screen does it interact with the gold system, right? That just doesn't yeah. happen. Nope. That's why, that's why I don't understand why people are like flipping a uh crap over how much this is going to ruin the game and this I'm is like the worst that, thing because there is one thing in this whole tree that does interact with the coin system and that is normally you get all of your influence for your guild from guild activities however coin can also purchase influence. We know this. We talked about this. You can buy the whole city of divinity's reach a round of drinks, right? And they'll give you some influence for it. And then you can use that influence to do what? Oku, what can we do with that influence? What kind of bonuses can we get from World vs. World? Well, I mean, you know, there's all kinds of, uh, you know, keep upgrades. We saw those in the last press beta. Um, you know, your turret, it's your, I don't remember exactly, but they're definitely gameplay things uh, that you purchase with influence. There are boosts that you can get for your guild, like extra karma, extra gold generation, extra magic find. Actually, I'm not sure about gold generation, but I know you can do some of those things. Uh, now, you can also get plus 40 power, plus 40 precision, plus 40 whatever. We're assuming that those can stack. Now, we know that you're going to get probably over a thousand of each of those things. So 40 is kind of trivial. But let's say that Oku, Team Legacy, has a benefactor, let's say, um, that decides... Uh, oh, well, we want Team Legacy to have all the best stuff, and I'm a millionaire, so yeah, I'm just going to spend tons of money and make sure that Team Legacy has so much influence that they can speed up their, their production of items in their guild thing, and they'll just have all the buffs all the time. So they have plus 40 power, plus 40 precision, plus 40 vitality, plus 40 toughness, and they've got extra magic find, and they've got extra experience gain, and they've got extra stuff. Is that going to make them unstoppable in World vs. World? Well, I... I think that the up the um, the buffs you get are actually they're cute, aren't they? So you can only have like one up one up at a time, I believe. That's what we're not quite sure about. I'm trying to find out that answer. I don't know if uh, you I can have more than one tied to the guild at a time, and or more than one tied to a keep at a time. I think the queue just allows for it to finish, but even then, the buffs I'm pretty sure are tied to the keep or the tower, or whatever that your guild has claimed. They are good for you in one area. Right. That's, that's definitely another true. limitation. Exactly. Well, I guess the way when I uh, when I was you know reading about it and seeing the videos and stuff, my impression was that you would have to choose like, what are we doing this weekend? Are we doing PVE? Okay, activate the PVE buff. What are we doing this weekend? Are we doing World vs. World? Okay, activate the you know influence buff. Right, and that's the idea behind the whole thing is is you're supposed to build these buffs and then activate them when you want. Now, my contention is that even if we had a benefactor that was making these things happen all the time. It was, it's A, going to cost a huge amount of money because in order to speed up the progress of all of these buffs, it costs huge amounts of influence. And the gold to influence rate is very inefficient. Buying gold with coin is very expensive. So you're going to have to buy a lot of gems, flood the market, trade it to tons of players for their gold, and use that to buy tons of influence. So we're talking maybe, if you want like all the buffs, 50 to $100 a day. Easy. How, are you, how long are you going to keep that up? I don't know. But if you did, my contention is that still, 
the only gameplay affecting things would happen around a single keep and only Wait, be correct. 40 power, 40 precision, 40, you know, out of 1,000. So, someone mentioned in the chat that it's not a single keep. It's around whatever keeps or towers you own. Or yes, but each only... guild can only hold can only... one keep, remember? Oh, so yes, yes. that's only around a single keep. Unless there's a benefactor for every one. guild. Yeah. And please, you got plus 40 this, plus 40 that, plus this, plus that. I show up with more people. What are you going to do? Exactly. A 5% like, buff to your stats or an extra 20 or, people. Or I bomb <laughs> you with a trebuchet, 20 of your guys die because they don't know how to stand out of the fire. Well, if you're just going to days ex machina everything. <laughs> I mean, I mean real, realistically, like the 40, let's say you get 40 vitality or something. That 40 vitality is what? It's good for maybe like two or three. Like two or three shots from a person that's going to keep Less. you alive that much longer? Less than that. <laughs> when it's 60 on 60, it's not even, it doesn't matter. It's, it's, it's negligible. Right. So not only are the buffs in fact negligible, not only is it completely implausible that somebody would go through all the trouble of paying money in order to do it, you get tons of influence just for signing into the game anyway, but maybe that's, a, maybe that's not true. Maybe that'll change by the game the game launches, but... Even if somebody did all of this stuff to get the buffs on everybody, if you really had a problem, you could A, bring more people, or B, go around the stupid keep. There's four <laughs> maps. Go somewhere where somebody's not being a big douche and get their <laughs> teams instead. Let them have the crappy keep with its little buffs, you know? Uh, so that's my, that's my contention when it comes to the whole... Oh, and, and world versus world. Oh, it'll imbalance world versus world. If, if you have 20 more people than I do, it's already imbalanced. Like, this is going to be a drop in the bucket compared to how many people each server brings. Yeah. That's my contention. Am I wrong? Is there anybody that disagrees? Go ahead. Speak up. Uh, it, it could upset the balance. I mean, Gigawatt, <laughs> Gigawatt just brought up a really good idea of, like, StarCraft upgrades, plus one upgrades, make a huge difference in battles. And, like, you think it's like, oh, it's only one damage per Marine. But it makes a huge difference, and having that, like, 200 health per person could turn the battle if you're, like, even. And that's what we have to think about, is, like, even never is going to happen in World of this World, like you guys were saying. But it, it can make a difference at times. Well, I will say that, you know, so take, for example, the orbs, right? So the, the orb bonus is a health bonus, I think, um, and... You know, so it may be negligible, but it's still important. Obviously, the, the orb buff they're making to be important. If, it, if it's not important, why are we going to attack orbs? So, I mean, that's something where they're taking, you know, maximum health and saying this is important. Yeah, but maximum uh, health for the whole server versus maximum health for a small area around a single keep is not <laughs> quite the same. Yeah, that's um, true. And, and somebody in there, uh, Gekimar, uh, Gekimir, um, it does say for any fortification your guild owns only old own one fortification that's that's been completely proven so we we know that it'll only ever affect one one keep for a single guild now if there are a ton of guilds on a single server like if a server has a benefactor that's willing to spend like a thousand dollars a day to win world versus world go for it buddy i don't care let you you can be number one and number two three and four we'll find it out and that will be very happy they will actually. Yeah, I, <laughs> you will, your guild will get like a gilded statue in the middle of World versus World, <laughs> <laughs> and I would. I, my hat is off to you, sir. Thousand dollars a day for arena net. That's hiring another uh, six programmers or something, you know. So that would be awesome, actually. Uh, all right. So anything else you think we should talk about with regards to gems for coin specifically before we talk about the gem store? Uh, can I say this? Yeah. For one thing, I, I mentioned this earlier, but I said. Buying gems and converting them to coin and then saying that's pay to win is almost the equivalent of saying I pay my subscription for WoW to get more time to play WoW so I'm winning at WoW. <laughs> like it's the, kind of the same path. Cause like, hey, you're... You can keep that within your own mind. Ignorance is bliss. It's the <laughs> same thing. So like, people arguing about pay to win, you're already paying to win to play SWOTOR if you're probably the people arguing are playing SWOTOR. And then or WoW, or whatever, Aeon, or Terra. And somebody pointed out, of course, that it, even if ArenaNet didn't do this, people would sell gold illegally. What this does is provide a legal outlet, and of course, this is something that EVE has done as well. We can see that ArenaNet has been looking at lots of different MMOs and sort of learning from the best of them, and EVE certainly has the best economic system out there. And EVE has a system called Plex, where you can purchase these uh, pilot lice extension 
uh, essentially things. And what they are is essentially you can you can redeem those to your account for 30 days of playtime. So you can buy them and then trade them to other players in game. So players can actually pay to keep their subscription going using in-game money by buying Plex from other players. So it's a similar system, except instead of the gems counting as, you know, playtime for a subscription, they're, they're buying vanity items from the gem store. So that has happened in other games. And what that does is it provides a legal alternative for the bad, to, the, to the bad guys who are doing the farming with bots and things like that to try to sell you gold. And what that means is, okay, sure, many people have pointed out, yeah, but if I have a bot, you know, a set of computers that are all bots that are just farming for free, then I can sell that to you cheaper than ArenaNet can because that exchange rate we talked about is flexible. Fine, sure, maybe you can undercut ArenaNet by a dollar. But if I'm a player, am I going to chance getting my entire account banned for a dollar? Or am I just going to get it the legal way, the one that's built right into the interface? No, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to buy it from ArenaNet. The, the, the amount of gold sellers is going to drop by 90% because of this decision. They're still going to be around. I'm not going to say it's going to get rid of them, but it is going to drop massively because they can't all stay in business if the majority of players are buying legally from ArenaNet. They're saving all those sweatshop kids in China from working in the gold factory. The no, gold. they're just keeping them in the oh. World of Warcraft sweatshops. Oh. So those, those exist. Those are real. <laughs> I'm not. I'm I not making that up. I know. Yeah, I think. I mean, I think a, a a really important part of this argument that we still have so many questions about is how much power do you actually buy with gold? I think the stuff we've seen so far indicates that, you know, gold, while important, is not necessarily you know such a key aspect. I mean, especially like if we're talking about WBW. You know, supply is far more important than gold, I think. Um, and that's something that's obviously even, and you're not going to be buying any bonuses for that. The, the way I kind of view the gems and the shop is that it's a way to, especially with the gems, the gems to me are a way to enhance your game. They're not like a pay to win or a game breaking thing. It's just you're not paying a subscription fee. So if you want to throw a little money in Arena Net to level up faster or get more karma or do these things so you can get through the game faster, that's your own business. But um, I don't view it as a game-breaking thing. It's just a way to enhance your gameplay that is completely not needed if you choose not to partake in it. So that's my take on it. The other thing which some people don't understand, Crazed is in there saying that you can't undercut ArenaNet because they generate gems for free. And that's true. But the exchange rate of how much gold you get for your gems is determined by how many players are willing to farm gold and sell that gold for gems. Remember, you don't simply go in here and say, I have gems to this NPC and he gives you gold. I have to sell that to another player. So the players have to be willing to trade me gold. And that means that there's going to be an exchange rate that is based upon how, pl how willing players are to grind gold to then sell it for gems to get things from the gem store. And that takes us directly to the gem store. Everybody in the chat room wants to hear about this apparently. So let's talk about the gem store and what kinds of things will be available. Uh, by now, a lot of people are probably aware there was a leak before the game went live. Apparently, there's a... Uh, online web interface that the beta players had access to that was up before the uh, the servers were up and it was it allowed people to get to it when it was not supposed to be there and let me start off by again saying we're not going to talk any numbers here because anything that's in there as far as numbers is concerned is subject to change it's just we have no idea how much this stuff is going to cost at the end there may be some guidelines in there if you want you can find it but I'm not going to link to it here's the deal the kinds of things that were leaked as to what, it, what was tested in the gem store this weekend, which again, is not necessarily what's gonna come in the game. Um, we know that there were some costumes, like pirate costumes, things like that. That's obviously something we expected based on the Guild Wars 1 system. Um, we know that there were things like karma boosts, XP boosts, crafting boosts, magic find boosts, which basically increases the chance that some rare items will spawn for you. Uh, we know transmutation stones are uh, probably going to be in there, things like that. We know you can also get transmutation stones in the game. We know that you can get dyes in there, uh, loot bags potentially to get some kind of things. Uh, now, then we got extra bank slots, extra character slots. Those are the kinds of things that we expected to be in there. Uh, the kinds of things that I actually didn't see in there that I expected were things like name change, character makeover, but those might just be coming later. They might be a separate account system. We'll see. Um, lots of different things here. Now, 
some of the things that stood out, uh, the XP boost. A lot of people are going, oh, well, with I could, my friend can spend $50, get tons of boost, play all the time, he gets way more stuff than me, and that's not cool. It's PvE, ladies and gentlemen. You mad, bro? Calm down. You mad, bro? Seriously. A very important uh, thing of that has been pointed out in chat. It's only for your kills. So not for you right. rewarded for a right. dynamic event, nothing for your story, nothing for world versus world, only for what you kill. And I'm not sure if you get the XP from players when you kill them. I, th I don't think so. Yeah, I'm so. not sure. I know that, you, well, they said you can level in world versus world. You probably do get pl kills from players. But I think you're right in that at least 60 to 70 percent of the XP that you get while leveling will probably come as rewards for dynamic events uh, and capturing keeps and things like that in world versus world. So that means that even though it says 50 percent XP boost, that probably actually averages out to about 20 percent if you're playing normally. Now if you're just sitting there killing the same mobs over and over again, then yeah, I guess you'll get 50 percent on those mobs, but how effective Round is that? Round up the centaurs! Yeah. How effective is that? <laughs> is there anybody here that really forward. shares the opinion of some of these people that I don't want Johnny to play the game faster than me? Like that affects my no. gameplay. I mean, it's only for. I want I them the, to do that. The boosts are only like an hour, you know. They're it's, very limited. They're, it's not. It's. It's not really worth it, in my opinion. The the one thing that I do not like that they're offering is that Mystic Key. Oh, to, the to, stupid. I. I really, really crate. don't like that. I hate, like, th to me, that's, the, that's the, the worst example of a carrot on a stick in front of your face. Like, ooh, you just got this little treasure chest. And look, it's going to have this, this, and this in it. And they're all random. But in order to open it, you got to buy this key. You know? Like, Only I two ninety nine. I hate when Valve did that. I hate that Guild Wars is picking it up. I just think it's stupid. Yeah. Incoming Vega rant. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> I won't rant. <laughs> And that's actually, I had the same reaction to you, is I'm like, no, oh, the stupid TF2 crate system, are you kidding me? And for those, like, you just explained it, but basically you drop these crates that, are, that have something in them that you don't know, and the only way to get in them is to buy a special key from the gem store, meaning you either have to save up a whole ton of gold and transfer it over into gems, which could translate into an hour, two, or two hours worth of you know, time spent farming for all intents and purposes, or you know, pay $1.75 or 2 bucks or whatever it winds up being. I don't have any hard numbers. Um, and, and get this key. And then when you open it, oh, that gun that I already had. Fantastic. <laughs> Damn you, Valve! I think, was it yeah. VG Cats that did the great comic? Did you guys see that? I'll pull it up Yeah, here. you linked it. Oh, I linked it in my show notes? No, not on the show notes, but... I linked it to somebody else. I'll find it. Uh, but yeah, that, that's really crates. the only thing I, I've seen in the influence, I mean, in the gem store that really just doesn't sit well with me. I mean, everything else, it's it's kind of, I guess, kind of looking at in terms of, like, League of Legends, how you could pay for those boosts and stuff like that. You know, it's if you want to do it, great, but it's not something that, oh, I'm really missing out on the carrot in front of your face kind of thing. I mean, this whole comic explains it perfectly. It's like, wait, you have to buy a key to open this? Ah, nuts to that. I'm not spending a penny on a damn fictitious item. I'm no sucker. And then the other guy says, that's cool. I mean, if you're fine with never knowing what it was, the inquisitions <laughs> of regret forever gnawing at your mind, what was in the box? And why didn't I open it? I mean, if you're cool with that kind of torture. So she's, she messes up the money and it unlocks, hey, yep, it's an item you already had. <laughs> and it, it works on everyone. It does. It but the best you know, part you know is the punchline of this whole thing. What kind of person comes up with a scam like this? Meanwhile, I found this Gabe Newell rolling around in a pile of money that goes <laughs> as far as the eye can see. And, That's and, the you best punchline like ever. Valve, the key was like... <laughs> oh, like oh my god. It was like 99 cents. I don't know how many of those stupid keys I bought because I was just like, <laughs> oh, you know, whatever. I'll just, I'll just buy a key. And then like a week later... Oh, I forgot I got that key. I'll just buy another key, and then, like, it adds up over time, and it just sucks. Yeah. You end up spending more on that than you would on a sub game. I know! I know. <laughs> Vega, That's what I hate so it. Vega recovering boxaholic here. Uh, they trick me. I fall for their tricks. Yeah. So, yeah. I had a problem yeah. with that Mystic Key because it just feels slimy. Right? It's like, well, we yeah. could just drop you the loot like we do every other piece of loot, but instead we're going to make you pay for this one. Like, that's so weird and gamey. Um, I mean, there's nothing inherently wrong with it, because if I don't purchase those keys, and, and Vega does, 
It doesn't really <laughs> hurt me, but it just feels slimy, you know? And I kind of expected more from ArenaNet. But again, maybe they won't be in the final thing. We can't judge it quite yet. We'll have to find out. Well, the thing – okay, well, the thing is, yes, that's purchased with gems. But that kind of goes back on their gold to gem system, and it's like, oh, we can put anything in the shot we want. Like, yeah, in theory, but you don't want to test your player base. And I might buy a few keys with my gold if I get a large stash or something. But it's not needed. It, it's definitely not needed. They would make, I I feel, they'd easily get the numbers they need of profit just by selling the gems because they already got the sale anyway with the gems, and then the key is just there. Didn't didn't they have keys in Guild Wars 1 that were similar? How did those work? Yeah, I think that those were in-game gold. Off. Or the keys drop. There you go. Oh. Grey Wolves... What is it? Perfect World? They have a system of random chests you purchase to open, and they have leaderboards for who opens the most chests. Wow. So people pay money to get to the top of the leaderboards. <laughs> oh, man. That is some kind of scam. Wow. That's wow. Slimy. That is definitely just slimy. That's that pay to win. Insane. That is crazy, and people do pay for that. All right, some other things in here. We talked about the boosts. Um, the t I think the, the, cool, the coolest thing in here is going to be the costumes and the town clothes. I just I just can't wait to get, like, a ninja versus a pirate outfit and just figure out and a monocle. better. And a monocle. Yeah, Got to have someone, a monocle. Someone um, go to, like, the theater in Divinity's Reach and act out this giant pirate versus ninja fight. <laughs> <laughs> that would be fantastic. Oh, my immersion. I mean, the the one thing I, I do like about the gem system is the fact that you can use gold to buy gems because it's not like other games where it's completely separate, that you can only get certain things if you want to pay money for them, you know? Like, if yeah, it might take a million gold to get that key or whatever it is, but you can still do it if you want to do it. It's not like other systems where, oh, that's a really cool skin, I bet you want that skin, but you got to pay me for it, you know? If you want to yeah. put in the time and you want to save up and grind for gold, you can get anything you can, anything you want, you know? And I think, that's, I think what that's, I, a, that's what I do like that's about That's a good thing. That is that's a really good thing. It's particularly if you think about, um, like, the character slots. I think it was also like that you buy those with gems. So, like, everyone was sort of on board with the idea of paying a little bit extra money to get character slots. Well, now you have the option, uh, you know, if you play five characters, you might have enough money to buy an extra character slot with in-game currency. That, that'd be yeah. definitely awesome. Absolutely. And now that, that is actually the, sort of the other side of this whole coin is people go, oh, you know, being able to purchase money is terrible. But the alternative would have been a gem shop, for example, a completely separate cash shop, the way that Guild Wars 1 is now, where the only way to get extra character slots was to pay money. So that's your alternative. You could either have people pay money to get gold, and have those two currencies intermix. Or you could have, uh, you know, the, the, the option to pay gold. Uh, well, or you could not have the option to pay gold for it. Now, here's a problem that I had, though, is they responded to a lot of the complaints from players with the, basically, it doesn't matter what's in the shop because everybody has access to it because you can pay gold. And that attitude was not like the best yeah. one to choose that, that kind of stuck out to me horrible. as not the best wording and i kind of took a not 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 offense to it but i really didn't feel appreciated like they don't appreciate my I leisure was disappointed. time i was really disappointed in the way that was worded it is true though they just they needed to word it a little bit yeah better. <laughs> i mean it, they basically you know it, it what they should have said, perhaps, is that nothing in the gem store will ever be required for you to have an enjoyable experience. Some of it may extend the experience in, much in the way that DLC would extend the experience. But if you don't have the cash, the upside of this whole system is that if you just save up your in-game cash and instead of spending it on things like that really cool, you know, bind on equip armor set or just hold off on trying to buy crafting materials and just rely on gathering them and getting, you know, getting that up slower. You know, restrict your spending in the game in order to purchase your extra character slots, in order to purchase your dapper monocle or top hat or what have you. Uh, you still can get those things. It's just going to take you a lot longer and you don't even have to change what you're doing as a player 
uh, in order to farm for it. You can just accept the fact that you're going to get it slower than everybody else because you're not paying for it. So, you know, that's actually kind of like, yeah, you can earn your own DLC without having to pay for it for real. So that's actually yeah. not a bad thing to say. I, they just didn't say it right. I, I, I think <laughs> that a, a lot of, I think something that's huge that people are overlooking is the fact that ArenaNet is a company that needs to profit. They can't just make a game and give it out and then just tank. You know, they, they need to profit. And the fact that they've stuck by their guns of not having a subscription fee and making this huge, massive, beautiful, open-world MMO that any other company would charge you a monthly fee for, the fact that they're not doing that and that they're implementing this gem system to try and get a little bit of income, but a gem system that doesn't that doesn't isn't required by any means it's just a way to enhance your game the p anyone who's complaining about the system as oh it's going to break the game you got to pay to win and stuff think about the fact that you're not paying a subscription fee you know you you're you're getting all this you're getting this game for just the price of a game they're not trying to scheme you with a subscription fee they're trying to give you a means that if you wanted to pay money and help them out and help yourself out it's a win win yeah and on that i will add do you see how beautiful this game looks? Do you see how polished these combat mechanics are? Those two things stay. I will, like, never drop this game. I don't care <laughs> what they put in the cash shop because I don't have to buy it. So, that brings us to the next and the only possible complaint that I can think of. And... Now you're still talking on my screen. <laughs> yes, <laughs> way my lag. <laughs> lag. Uh, it's so talk. weird to be looking over there and see him like in silence. Um, <laughs> anyway, sorry, I got away from me there. The, there is one potential downside with this whole system, is because it makes you ask yourself, well, okay, there's an XP boost in there, or there is something in there that you don't need, but would be nice to have. Well, what it does is it provides an incentive to ArenaNet to basically create inconveniences for the player and then sell them the remedy to those inconveniences in the cash shop, right? I'm not saying ArenaNet will do that. In fact, I don't think that they will. But one of the really things that I was really excited about Guild Wars 2 and one of the arguments I would use against it, uh, 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 with people trying to tell them they should get it is that, A, there's no subscription fee which is good for your wallet, and B, because there's no subscription fee, they don't have to extend the time artificially on a 10 minutes on a wyvern ride from one end of the continent to the other. No, you just instant fast travel there, right? There's no reason for you to have to worry about that. However, now that they have a cash shop, that has taken the place of the subscription fee where they artificially inconvenienced you in, in uh, World of Warcraft in order to stretch out the amount of time that you played the game to whereas half the time you were spending actually playing the game was not playing it. It was sitting there waiting for, a, you know, going to get a sandwich while your crafting menu finished. Now, we have seen that ArenaNet has, A, given you fast travel, made crafting basically instantaneous no matter how many things you're crafting to make it so that you don't have to sit there the same way you did in World of Warcraft. There's so so many little things that Arena has done that prove to us that we can trust them to say, listen, we are not going to sell you a game that causes you to have inconveniences unless you pay us money. However, now there's an incentive for them to do that, right? There's, an in there's that incentive. Oh, what if we sold them? What if we had this magic box drop and they need to buy a key to get into it? Normally, we just drop them the item, but instead we'll wrap it up in this box and make it inconvenient so that they have to get this thing or spend a bunch of time grinding. So, you know, those are the kinds of things that feel like they weren't put in there to make the game better. They were just put in there to inconvenience the player so that now you can buy the inconvenience unlock item from the store. And so but, that's the fear. But Vegas. that sounds so I, evil. And Arena, that's not evil. Yeah, I mean, I, 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 do we know anything about what's actually in the Mystic Chest? Because I know, like, at TF2, the stuff you're getting from the boxes is, like, very powerful and game-changing, right? But, I mean, I guess I'm holding on to the hope still that the stuff inside the Mystic Chest is purely cosmetic. Is a pet? <laughs> you, get, you, get, <laughs> you might like, be right. You, you know three, what? If you're right. You get three things. You think, you think, you, you, have you uh, read something about what's coming in the Mystic Chest? 
Yeah, I, I, I'm pretty sure it's just it's three things. Um, I'm not. I, I can't remember what it was, but it wasn't just like you open it up and you get one thing. It's not, it's definitely not game changing like TF2. You get a new weapon or something that you know because weapons in TF2 were you know substantial. The game. Um, yeah, but. <laughs> I mean, I'm sorry. I mean, be honest. <laughs> he said, "I'm sorry, but, I didn't read the description," because <laughs> everybody's complaining about resurrection orbs. We'll get there in a second, but I have to say, Miane said, "Oh, I didn't know ArenaNet added a stop sucking item to the cash shop." <laughs> <laughs> Bravo, sir. Sorry. Continue. We'll get to resurrection orbs in a second. <laughs> oh no, I was, I was just saying. I thought I read somewhere that it comes with a couple, couple different well, items that's true, that actually. aren't really if, that important. If it's all the, aesthetic. The stuff that comes in the in the mystic chest then it's even it's even less of an issue all right so let's talk about what what miane and these guys are talking about this the perfect salvage kit the full armor repair and the the resurrection orb now those do what you would think that they would do essentially and that's that uh the perfect salvage kit gives you a higher chance to get the um you know better items from uh the gear that you're salvaging essentially now there's certainly possible possibilities that you can get that perfect salvage salvage kit elsewhere in the game. I mean, maybe you can get it in exchange for karma you, for all we you know. You probably get like an expert salvage kit, which yeah. might offer a slightly less percentage chance. Do you, well, want, it, you want it for an extra 10% chance to get a piece of wood? Would you like to buy it for no, $2? No, no, no. For an extra 10% chance to get a shiny piece of wood. Oh, I'm sorry. Shiny. Shiny bow. Shiny bows do two more damage than regular bows. Plus two. Plus two bow of <laughs> shiny. They blind your, and they blind 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 your opponents they <laughs> with their shiny wood. <laughs> wow, that went somewhere that it shouldn't have gone fast. Anyway, um, <laughs> so the repair kit uh, is... Somebody said that the salvage kit and the repair kit is craftable. That's interesting. If those were craftable items. Anyway, um, let's see. Uh, the salvage kit and the repair kit, meh. The repair kit's a very much a convenience item. It lets you get around the whole going back to the store to, to, or the, the blacksmith and, and stopping your questing in order to uh, repair your, your, your items that were broken while you were dead or while you died, while in the process of dying, whatever. But it doesn't remove the penalty, does it? Now the penalty becomes out of your wallet on your credit card instead of in your in-game cash. So that's an interesting you know, flip right there. Or it could be your in-game cash if you buy a repair kit with gold. Now, the thing that they were just talking about in there is the resurrection orbs that let you resurrect yourself uh, after you die. This is basically an onk for the shaman in uh, World of Warcraft. If these things are on a cooldown, which they should be, and it's PvE only and nowhere near World vs. World, who cares? If you're quite up in res you are you gonna complain about it oh, i can't believe you bought that item it really screws with my experience my 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 it, i, I mean, really it, don't think it it's be, a deal they can't there, even there use it in dungeons right I don't think you can use them in dungeons either. I would be very surprised yeah. if you could use resurrection orbs in and, dungeons. And there's so many like fast travel points around the world that yeah. If, if you would think that if you died somewhere, it's not going to take you like, oh god, I got to run an hour to get here, you know? Like it seems like they they have fast travel everywhere that you'd be able to just kind of like fast travel and then walk over to you know to where you were. It's not going to take you hours. That damn, I wish I had that res orb. <laughs> Well, Shadow says, you know, but why was durability added to facilitate the sale of the repair kit? I don't think that's the case. Durability was added to add some kind of a punishment to death, because if you don't have a punishment for death, nobody ever learns anything. But in addition, it was added to provide a long-term attrition mechanic to tell players, hey, you've died six times in the last, you know, ten minutes, and now your gear's falling off. Maybe you should try something easier, noob. And, <laughs> and granted, I would not believe that had I not seen the dungeon videos coming out from Yogg's cast and some of the other people. <laughs> you wouldn't have believed yep. that people were that See, dumb that they had, to, they had to be naked but, before they realized well, maybe it, I should it, go it, try it, something it easier? Proves. I mean, it's not like, okay, players are bad, they died over and over. No, 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 no. This was hard mess. I'd like to see anyone in the chat get through an explorable dungeon on the first time. I hope it's that hard. It's got to be that hard. Yeah. I got I want I want to uh I want to get I want to improve my own skill until I'm good enough to beat the dungeon. I don't want my character to get better gear until I can beat it easily and not have to improve myself, you know. I agree. That that yeah. those experiences are just much more memorable. Much more satisfying too. Indeed. Mm -hmm. All right. Yeah, okay. Now the 
isn't as hard as Dark Souls, I'll be disappointed. <laughs> <laughs> it will be if you play PvP. Dark Souls. <laughs> play PvP. Now, here's the only other thing that I thought was kind of slimy, but not game-breaking and not a deal-breaker per se. And that's that it looks like there will be packs of mini-pets, a la uh, Magic the Gathering, you know, packs that you open and they'll have random pets in them. Oh, and Richard, it's just like, you gotta, gotta catch, you gotta them, catch all. them all, man. No. That's a great South Park episode. Uh, I just hate that collectible, like, you don't know what you're getting, but pay money anyway. Oh, that just drives me <laughs> up the wall. Even if I never buy it, the fact that it's in there and other people are buying it will make me rage day after Some day. Some people are going to love it. They're going to be like, oh, I, got, I just got my paycheck. check. I might die a month earlier just because that exists in this game. <laughs> Let me pull some Guild Wars for you, um, Bridger. Uh, Guild Wars 1, you got these mini pets by your birthday, which um, be your character being one year old, you got a mini pet. So <laughs> if they do something along the same system, these things will start appearing in the game anyway. Also, if these things are tradable, that could be a good system with the whole gotta catch them all thing. People who want to collect everything. There's, yeah. The, Okay, if it's not in there yet, I'm sure it'll be in there eventually. Rock Solid 84 mentions they will add a pet collector title. It may already be there. Now, if it's, a, if it's such a thing as, you know, okay, I'm going to let all the suckers go and buy these packs, and when they get duplicates of the same thing over and over again and sell them on the auction house, I'll pay a little bit more gold to buy exactly what I want. Yeah, I guess that's not well, bad, but well, I still hate I, that you can't just... Ah, it's collectible garbage. It's like, it's like garbage. the achievement whores that, were, that wanted to get every single mount in World of Warcraft. I mean, the Magic the Gathering sort of collectible card game system was as brilliant as it is stupid for people to buy it, you know? But it's just, it, it's so... People, it's psychology, I don't know. It just bugs the hell out of me. Because <laughs> you can do the same thing with not only mini pat mini mini many packs, many pets, but also dyes. So if you would like to get some new dyes, you could, you know, go into this store and get three random dyes. One of them is uncommon and two are common. And at least, though, they do see to have common and uncommon, so you can't get rares this way. I don't know yeah, how you would get rares. It's, it's readily accessible to get dyes in game, though. Yeah, and you do that start was, with was, tons of dyes. That, 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 that's a similar system to what I saw about with that the chest, how you get, like, a common and uncommon and a, you know... It's a similar thing to that. Where like with the pets, you get three pets, and the dies, you get three dies. With those chests, you get three somethings, of yeah. differing rarities. I mean, I guess one thing that kind of bugged me about the die system was that, you know, I was kind of excited about, you know, they had those die blogs. And they're talking about all this different variety and stuff, and it's kind of like, now it's kind of like they'll sell you these options. You know what I mean? And you don't even get to choose what you're buying, right? Well, I think you start. I think you get like a good amount of dyes to start yeah, out you with. Really so. You do start with a yeah. bunch. I mean, you I start know, with enough colors to make pretty much whatever you want. It might just not be quite lot. the shade that you want. They're just not the super sort of rare the... colors, so you can't be the pink pony rainbow warrior right <laughs> at the start. Because you'll only have of off of pink. You'll have rouge. Um, the, the, the one thing that I, they have in there that I would gladly pay for is a character makeover. Because when I logged back into my Guild Wars 1 account and looked at some <laughs> of the characters I made, I was like, what the hell was I thinking when I made this guy? It's like, I was 15 years old back then. Yeah. yeah. Well, the other thing that I'm hoping to do is just hit all hard random on everything that has to do with character creation and and just zoom through it so I can name my character and get the right name as soon as possible and then pay the cash to go back and make the character look the way that I want because somebody's <laughs> going to steal my name. There's nice. no way I can get that ahead of time unless they provide a system to verify. Can't, wait, can't, can't you use a, a Guild Wars 1 character name? So Not like... just for Bridger, though. That's Guild Wars right. 1 character's name Bridger, had to be two names. I saved, I saved mine, I, I saved mine huh? in Guild Wars 1 so that when Guild Wars 2 comes around, I could delete that one and make this one. Well, yeah, but it's uh -huh. two names in Guild Wars, two, Guild Wars 1. You had to have a two-word name. Yeah, so okay. I couldn't have just the name Bridger, for example. I'd have to have Nathan Bridger or, you know, Sheridan something or other. Um, all right. Or, or, or just like, hold on, I'm typing it in tab. Just name it like My Immersion. <laughs> my Immersion, my, the character. Like that. <laughs> they call me My Immersion. How are you? Or like that. Like Vega did. <laughs> Just space everything out and look kind of weird, but get All the right. point across. So, 
Last thing that everybody was freaking out about is the megaphone, which is described yes. as the hell out of me. A, something that you can uh, purchase. And with this megaphone, you can uh, essentially send a message to everybody that's logged into the game. And it costs, I don't know, a dollar or two dollars or less or something like that. Dollar fifty, Ever. maybe two bucks. It was like a few cents or something. No, I think it was with the with the current prices. It was something around a dollar fifty or a dollar. Uh, but of course, subject to change. Now, I was thinking about this a lot. Let's assume for the for the, just for the moment, um, for the sake of argument, there's no way to have a single global chat that everybody in your server will see. That I believe the way it currently is set up is everything is based on the region that you're in. So if you're in Divinity's Reach, you can talk to everybody else that's in Divinity's Reach. If you're in the Barrens, you can talk to everybody else that's in the Barrens. I mean, um, uh, wow. Crito. So you know what I mean, right? <laughs> the Barrens chat. Scary stuff, kids. Yeah, it is. <laughs> wait a minute, wait a minute. Barrens chat. Not even once. There we go. So that's the current system. Now, if they put in a global chat channel it would probably just be spam and everybody would close it anyway right does that mm -hmm. make sense so yeah. what if you wanted to allow people to have the ability to talk globally but you wanted to have a price attached to it so that people couldn't do it and wouldn't do it unless it was important the that's called kind of supply and demand if you make something scarce uh, if you want something to become scarce, you have to add a cost to it. So maybe this is just them saying, well, we don't want full, you know, chat across the entire server, but we don't want people not to be able to do that either. We just want it to be limited. Well, the best way to limit it is to put a real high price on it, which is either in cash or in gems, or gems or in uh, coin. I think that could actually work. It could let you you know, go into PVE and say, hey, everybody, our server's really close to winning. We need just a few more people in World versus World, and that costs you a buck and a half. And if you think that message is important enough to spend a buck and a half, you'll do it. And it also means that the gold farmers will have to spend money if they want to do that, and those kinds of messages can probably be easily tracked and reported and banned <laughs> because th there's not that many of them, is there? I just don't like... I, I, I understand the benefits of it, but... I just don't, it feels weird paying a dollar just to announce to everyone on the server, like, the keep is getting attacked, come defend the keep. Like, if it's just, how many, like, where's it going to show up? Is it going to show up in the chat window? That's what a good question. Yeah, window that, that matters a lot as to if this shows up in the be, middle of your screen. Is it going to come across my screen? Because <laughs> <laughs> then I will pay, I will pay a dollar just to, because when I, when I imagine the megaphone and I imagine someone just kind of being like, I'm a douchebag! Like, just announcing it <laughs> to the whole world. I paid $1.50 for that, right? That's basically it. <laughs> That's why they're so awesome. So, but I, but I, do, I do see the benefit of stopping the whole gold spamming and all that stuff. So... I mean, it's, it's, it's a way, I mean, the alternative, I mean, it looks like they, uh, they removed the megaphone from the beta is what a lot of people are saying is the information that we got. But uh, if it were in the game, think about it this way. You either have no global chat or a global chat with a cost associated with it to guarantee that only important messages or messages that are deemed important by the person spending the money. Nope. You I just say no global chat at all? Messages on the megaphone. You there say, will only be trolling and spamming yeah. on the megaphone. Yeah. I mean, I think there's a lot better costs you can associate, right? Like, why not, like, an election system or whatever? You guys can nominate people, and then if they get enough votes, they get global chat. I mean, that would solve the same problem as <laughs> cost, right? That's interesting. I don't know, I just feel like if you, if you have, like, the pay barrier is not a very high barrier because you can't put the barrier high enough that people won't use it for the actual purpose, and you can't put it low enough that, you know, it actually stops people from using it. For the wrong That's purpose. true. We're still going to see tons of people like, my guild is awesome. I've got three of my friends in it, and we're going to be the best there is. Uh, that's going to happen much. a lot if, that's, if the megaphone is in there. So certainly the uses of it are not all things that I would like to see necessarily. But the question is, how prevalent is it going to be? Can you disable it? And then if you could disable it, that makes it even a bigger joke of an item, right? If you just turn it off the first time you get spammed with it. So everybody does that. And the only people reading those advertisements for guilds are suckers. 
And so the only people advert advertising are suckers, and so the suckers find their own sucker guild. <laughs> it's beautiful! A reading that thought of everything! Ouch. <laughs> Wait, are we supposed to diss uh, deuces at this point, or is that later? <laughs> oh, 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 snap! I hope okay. for oh, no, forever. you didn't! We're just did that. It's yeah. not that we're dead. <laughs> <laughs> Never getting a girl back on the show again. Dang it! I knew I shouldn't have let Oku on here. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I think we're coming up on two hours here. Any final thoughts? Megaphone. <laughs> I think people need to stop QQing about this. They should make a ten dollar super megaphone that takes over the whole everybody's screen simultaneously. <laughs> it just fills it with like it fills it across all the servers. Just like a oh, six. Wow. It's like a, you can put a video advertisement there for cars. You'll have Ford ads coming up on the corner of the screen. <laughs> they pay ten bucks. Oh, God. They can do what they want. All right. Uh, what do you think about this now? This is the only other thing that I thought of that might be an issue. And uh, so this will be our last topic. There was a post on the Guild Wars 2 guru forums. I mean, people first were talking about how, oh, man, if you get, uh, you know, if you get this gems to gold thing, it's going to cause inflation. And a lot of people pointed out, no, why would it cause inflation? Well, H.E. Fan, Heffen, maybe, said, quote, let's look at it more methodically. Inflation in the game is caused by an extra quantity of gold that is added to the economy and not taken out. Net inflow of gold equals time spent farming for gold times the gold drop rate minus gold sinks. I think he's got the math checks out, right? The amount of inflow of gold is basically how much is flowing into the economy versus, and, and then subtracting the stuff that's getting pulled out. Now, we know by allowing players to purchase cash shop items such as character slots and extra inventory, time spent farming gold is going to increase because the value of gold just got more valuable, right? when you can trade golds for gems and gems to buy character slots, that gold is now much more valuable than it would have been if you couldn't have bought character slots with it. Does that make sense? Yeah. Are we following will here? That, will that punish new players? There's another good question. But what he says is, the time spent farming will increase because gold itself is inherently more valuable. Now, the only way this is a problem, though, is if ArenaNet's gold sinks have not have taken this into account. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We know that cash shop items themselves are not gold sinks since they only take gems out of the economy. They don't take gold out of the economy. Now, I am very confused as to how ArenaNet uh, is going to deal with the gold inflation in Guild Wars 2 because if I farm well, for example, and I don't get defeated, I never pay any extra gold. The durability system in World of Warcraft works because the, what it does is damages your armor for being in combat. And why are you in combat? You're in combat to earn Right? So every time you're earning gold, you're also getting armor damage, which means you have to have gold sinking. Well, there's also the waypoints, too. Like, if you're yeah, traveling I know, there's, at all, yeah, there's other gold the sinks, correct. But if I farm... Oku, okay, you're okay. echoing a little bit there again. It's coming through just a tiny bit. Uh, if uh, I farm, what, I, I can just farm in the same place for like four hours straight and not have any gold sinks basically change based on how much I am farming. Does that make sense? That's my fear, is that the, if I can farm more and I don't have to pay more gold for doing it. I don't know how it's going to work out. I don't I can't know answer because I'm too mesmerized by the echo. Yeah, Oko, okay, you're still <laughs> echoing a little bit there. I don't know what I did. <laughs> what <laughs> things did you do? I can hear you, wrong. yeah. It's just a tiny <laughs> bit. Is it coming out through speakers or headphones or getting twiggeted, twaggeted? Confused. Oh, wow. It says he's muted. All right. Huh. Well, now it's Time. muted. So Ghost. we'll just finish up here. Oku, type out any thoughts that you have here, and we'll, we'll finish it that way. Um... <laughs> But yeah, I mean, I, I feel like, you know, we do know that there's three gold sinks. There's teleports and repairs, and then um, there's also the blueprints in World vs. World, certainly. And there's probably plenty of other gold sinks in the game. I mean, I know influence, buying influence is also a gold sink, potentially. So, 
there's tons of gold sinks, but none are linked directly with the activity that gets you gold in the first place, which is why World of Warcraft's gold sink system was tied directly to that. I don't know. I, I don't know. I, don't I actually know thought what would work really well is if in the background, without telling any of the players this, and maybe players would figure it out, but in the background, each account would be allotted a certain amount of gold, and if they ever hoarded a whole bunch of gold, the amount of gold that would drop for them would decrease over time. That's right? kind of slimy. That would piss That would solve off. an economy system. Yeah. That would solve an economy system. Why do you need more gold if you've already got tons of gold? Some people like to hoard gold. Some people just love hoarding <laughs> Some people gold. are dragons, you know. I, I hoard everything <laughs> but gold. I hoard all the things. I can see that being a new show on TLC, hoarding virtual style. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> hoarding more. virtual equipment. Uh, I think we've <laughs> just jumped the shark. <laughs> Miane, are Jump. you translating for Freelancer? Is he on TeamSpeak? Why isn't he in chat translating for himself? No, no, no. Like... Uh, there's this guy in chat, Wolves something, whatever. He's been playing Freelancer for about the entire show. Oh, he's, he's I, see, I keep forward, seeing him. I so keep Miane thinking it up. Oh, no, Miani's picking it up. I see. <laughs> All right, predicting what the Freelancer would say. <laughs> <laughs> Immersion breaker. And with that, I think we jump in the shark here. I think it's time to close out the show. Final thoughts, anybody? Megaphone. Me <laughs> That's it. Call it. I Megaphone is mega. I can has beta, please. Yeah, I know, right? Next time. Maybe next time. Here's Seriously. hoping. Here's hoping they got one before the, the April one that maybe we'll get into. We'll see, ladies Give and gentlemen. Give us that beta. That's going to be the end of it. It's a massive two-hour show today. Uh, next week, we'll be back with more. Hopefully, we'll get another blog post of something. And uh, it's going to be fantastic. I'm going to stop saying fantastic and just say the game looks Amazing! Fabulous. And I can't wait to actually get my hands on it. For Bridger, signing off. Have a good night, guys. Good night, everyone. Good night. Peace.